I'm setting up a bunch of colors because I have absolutely no idea what colors I have. And I've done a few pours in the last couple of weeks. So I'm going to try and use up some of my leftover paint. But some of the paint's looking a little sketchy, so we'll see what we've got. I know that's still good. These are still good. That should still be good. That's good. This is good. That should be good. That's good white. Wow. So we got some cool stuff. And we are going to do a pour tonight. I've got a bunch of leftover paint here. Um, from several other pours. I've got some cool colors lined up. Looks like we might be doing a, a festive uh, Spanish style, like a Mexican cantina type of a pour. I really like those. Um, I've got a couple of paints left over from my Yeah Baby Psychedelic 60s that I did, which I've gotten a lot of good response on. And I've sold prints of that. One of the things, if you guys are artists and you want to make a little bit of extra and you, and you are willing to sell prints of your work make sure you guys take quality photographs of your work and you can you can do it with a phone but it's more recommended if you do it with a decent camera something that's at least 12 megapixels preferably more um, DSLR cameras range in value so whatever your budget can afford but a couple of things with that number one make sure you're not using a flash especially if you have sealed your painting and it's varnished or epoxied or whatever you guys are using to do that because that flash is going to look hideous on it so if there's anybody out there doing that stop doing it the second thing is natural light is the best and try and minimize the amount of post-production stuff you do with your photograph meaning don't tweak it color wise saturation wise if, if you have a background that's dark, it's going to look a whole lot better if you're selling on places like Etsy or Facebook or Pinterest or wherever it is that you sell. Uh, if you have a website, things look good on a dark background and they also look good as you've painted them. A lot of times customers will be like, what in the world? When, when I saw the photo of this, it looked brilliant and dynamic. And then when I got it, it was faded so please make sure that you're putting accurate pictures of what you guys are selling online so that's just a little tip if you can even like a Canon sure shot something that's really gonna enhance the actual portrayal of your of your painting so that's just my little tip for the week on pouring um, I'm gonna be extremely boring for the next five minutes I'm rolling this start to finish which means that my camera is up high atop something that I really don't want to get up and down on so this is going to be a one take. I'm going to talk through some of it but for the next five or ten minutes I'm going to be doing some mixing which is about as exciting as watching the painting dry. So if you guys want to fast forward to the next part where I'm actually getting ready to put all this in the cups and I haven't figured out exactly what I'm going to do if I'm going to do like a dirty pour or a flip cup or if I'm going to do a kiss pour. So one of those things, one of those three is probably going to happen. You know, I might have just enough in this. Something else I recommend. Now this will kick up some air bubbles that you'll probably have to torch out. Something else that I would recommend if you're using uh, a premix on a base that I have done in this. Um, put a couple of marbles in this and just it acts like a, a decent rattle can. I should have enough to do this. A little, some kind of smuts on there. Yes, I said smuts. Some of you guys get a kick out of it when I say that. It's better than cussing on camera. I try not to. Okay. Oh yeah, I've got more than enough. More than enough. And I'm a little bit far away from the camera. I've kind of repositioned it. 
so that you guys can have a better shot at what I'm doing. And uh, I might time lapse this for you guys, just uh, just cause. Wow, that's looking beautiful. When you do a kiss pour or any kind of a ring pour and you want to maintain the integrity of the circle, you have to tilt in a circle too. And that can be a little bit tricky. I think we're going to tilt this way first. try and get that paint load over that side. And I still have a fairly sizable center mass of paint. So I don't I don't want to lose a whole bunch over the side. But at the same time, I got to make sure that we get some of that load off.
I'm just kind of going back and forth, trying to keep the center of this as centered as I can. just grab these edges here with a little extra paint that's fallen off the side instead of trying real hard to continue that. I've got the majority of the mass off. Before I torch this, folks, I'm going to bring the camera down and show you guys. Look at how this is set up. What? Look at that. Look at that. This is one of those, you know, one of those paintings that you just don't even really want to touch. Really big cells. Wow. <laughs> Beautiful. Look at all the green spider webbing through here. Even the black along the edges is pretty cool. Definitely cool.